takes place seven years after, or a minimum of three and a half years, after the rapture. Hmm. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, math, math, <laughs> math, I'm, I hate math, and math hates me, I might add. Uh, if this countdown starts next week and extends for the next year and a half and includes the, you know, the Battle of Armageddon uh, and uh, the Great Tribulation, then at least, at the very, very least, a year and a half ago or three years ago, the rapture must have taken place already. That's by John Hagee's own theology. You can't have the Great Tribulation, which actually technically in their theology Mm -hmm. begins three and a half years after the rapture. Okay, You can't have the rapture coming up sometime between next week and September of next year. Okay, you can't have the Battle of Armageddon, the Great Tribulation, coming up in our future within the next year and a half, without demanding, demanding logically that the rapture has already taken place. Yet I can assure you, John Hagee will be preaching this Sunday, which means he was left behind. Oops. Hmm. Something, you know, did he he pass math as a kid in school? (laughs) Well, uh, I don't know. I Hmm. barely did, but my math on this is pretty good, I can assure you, uh, because I know the dispensational uh, paradigm probably as well as most dispensationalists do, and this is not a brag, it's just a fact, I know it even better than some of them do, Uh, and this this is just simply the dispensational paradigm. You have the rapture of the church, the church is taken out of the world, Mm -hmm. the Antichrist signs a peace treaty with Israel, allowing her uh, to rebuild the temple, and may I insert a little anecdote here, Rob? Please do, sir. On my Facebook page, uh, of course, I, I do this kind of teaching, and I had a fella jump up and call me a false teacher, a heretic, I'm doomed to hell, et cetera, et cetera, other kind of epitaphs attached to me. Well, that's because he doesn't know you and respect you like we do here. <laughs> anyway, he said, what you don't understand is a peace treaty will be signed mm-hmm. between Israel and the Antichrist, the man of sin, no later than June 21st of this year. Well, I thought, well, that's just pretty cool. Uh, That must mean that he knows who the Antichrist is. Obviously, the Antichrist has got to be somewhere around here if he's going to sign a peace treaty with Israel. And my, 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 how fast things have got to transpire transpire between now and June 21st. So I issued a challenge to him. I said, no, I believe you're wrong. And I said, "I, I would put this challenge to you. If there is a peace treaty between the man of sin... And Israel, allowing Israel to rebuild a temple in Jerusalem, which, of course, necessitates the removal of the Dome of the Rock, exactly. which is only a minor insignificant you know, <laughs> obstacle, uh, at least as far as the, is- the Muslims are concerned. So I said, if a peace treaty is signed allowing for that, I will give you $1,000. If, however, a peace treaty between the man of sin and Israel is not signed by June the 21st, 2014, you will send me $1,000. Well, he wrote back and he said, well, let's make it $100. I don't know if that's simply a reflection on his financial ability. You know, I wasn't throwing the money out there because I've got a lot of money, but I'm real confident that his prediction is false. So I said, okay, I'll take you up on the $100. Over the next couple of weeks, we negotiated back and forth. And before you know it, I said, are you going to withdraw? When, I didn't say if, but I said, when the peace treaty is not signed, are you going to send me my money? He said, well, when the the bottom line is, uh, he said, I can actually delete all of my comments so that nobody even knows this took place. And I said, oh, that would be a real ethical thing to do. So I cut copied and pasted his comments into my own link so that he cannot erase them. Excellent. You know, uh, this is the kind, and excuse me again, I don't, again, I don't want to be unkind, but this is the kind of nonsense that the skeptics and the enemies of Christ point to and laugh at, and they say, ah, see, another idiot, another fake prophet. 
And I can assure you, and, you know, if I could get a hold of John Hagee, now I will, I will say this. Some years ago, we sent a formal letter uh, challenging John Hagee to meet me in formal public debate. Uh, no response whatsoever. Sounds like the luck my producers are having. Yes. I warn you. <laughs> now, we're, not, we're not through with him yet. We're not through with him. Yes. Well, uh, you know, surely there is some reputable, uh, respectful, uh, honorable uh, person out there who would be willing to come on this program and to discuss issues. Um, but you're but all. I, but you're already here. I, I'm here. I'm yes, ready. you are. You, you're you here know, already. I, so we've fa found that honorable and respectable person. Well, uh, I know that, but I love to engage these people from the other side, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love to be able for people, your audience, to be able to hear both sides. Uh, because, you know, it's kind of like the book of Proverbs says, uh, when the man first man uh, speaks, he sounds convincing until the, until the other man provides an answer. And um, I like, and this is the way that I was raised, I love to hear both sides. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what the other side has to say so that I compare it with what I believe. Then I look at what the Bible says and say, okay, you know, I, well, number one, I've got to change this. But number two, he's got to change that. You know, maybe we're both wrong. Maybe both of us have a little bit of truth, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I love to engage in honorable, respectful discussion with people who hold the, the different views. But, but, Rob, as I told you, when we begin talking about uh, contacting representatives from futurist world, I told you it would be very, very difficult to get any of them to meet me in public debate. Well, we're not through with them yet. <laughs> That's Let's all I can say, Nancy. <clears throat> yes. I'm currently in written negotiations with a man. Uh, he challenged me to a debate mm -hmm. for New York October of this year. Well, when we got down to it and we began to discuss the logistics and the rules of honorable discussion, uh, and one of the rules of discussion being that you have to view your opponent as your equal – uh, and treat them re with respect and dignity. You don't use any slurs, any slander. He refused to sign that. Oh, brother. Oh, Dr. Don, please stand by, my friend. You and I have to take a commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. Exonation, the one and only Dr. Don K. Pierce uh, Preston is my special guest. www.bibleprophecy.com. It's that simple. For more information on Don Preston, please visit his website at www.bibleprophecy.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this news break as we continue from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Are you considering calling a psychic to read your situation? Then consider David Champion, a psychic medium for more than 20 years with thousands of readings under his belt. David Champion will make you feel comfortable. He has proven to be honest and accurate. He's a straight shooter. There's no guesswork. What he sees is what you get. While he is a medium, most of the calls focus on relationships. Not only love, but work, school, neighbors, and more. Need help with finding a job and preparing for the interview? Are you dealing with people who are obstacles in your path? For more information, go to davidchampion.com, $1.50 per minute, paid by credit card, with a minimum of 30 minutes. For your reading with David Champion, call 1-877-702-8598. That's 1-877-702-8598. Now you can dial in to listen to the Exxon Radio Show from anywhere in the world with Rob McConnell 24-7, 365 by dialing 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080. If you have a mobile phone or landline, the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is now at your beck and call at 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080, 24-7. 
Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. You know, this is, it's been over a month since the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370. Uh, yesterday, everybody was excited. They were able to listen to the pings uh, from, uh, you know, from a spot that today, a spot that the Australians and the Chinese found. Today, the authorities are saying the Chinese did not hear us, uh, did not hear the uh, black box, but it was actually coming from the ship they were on. Now you've got the Australians who are saying, well, yesterday we had the pings. But today we can't find them. Is it possible that the batteries died? Hey, listen, it's, it's a big story, and there are so many people who are in so much pain because of the loss. I'm, t- I'm, I'm talking about the families of the flight crew as well as the many passengers. We see their pictures on TV. We see the, the heartbreak that they're going through. And I think the media is, 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 is living on it too much, Dr. Don. We should be, give them their privacy. You know, I, I don't think they need cameras in their face 24 hours a day, and I certainly don't think that the, the news media should be constantly on the story. There's one network that's, that's all they talk about. It's been a month now. All you hear about is Flight 370. Now, I understand and I appreciate the significance of, 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 the, of the missing aircraft, whether it's nefarious or not. Uh, the the events that led up to the disappearance are still under investigation. Um, Doctor Doctor Don, what's your outlook on on the events surrounding Flight Three Seventy? Well, <clears throat> obviously, I agree with with you, Rob. The the tragedy, the human tragedy, is just uh, it it almost makes me cry yeah. when I see the families and the suffering they're going through. And then I have a tendency to get somewhat angry at, at the media uh, that you've mentioned. You know, CNN here in America mm-hmm. will not let the story go, and and yet they've done some of the most horrific kind of sensationalizing. Yep. Um, I, I'm I'm sure you're aware. The other night, one interviewer, uh, one host had a panel discussion. He actually asked. If they believed it was possible that the plane flew into a black hole. Now, excuse me. I'm not much of a scientist. Yeah. But I know there are no such things as black holes here on Earth that planes can fly into. Black holes are in outer space. And for a, quote, journalist, unquote, To ask such a question Mm -hmm. is literally just, it's insulting to the the listening and to the viewing audience as to think, why would a serious journalist ask such an off-the-wall question? And it it just seems like every, every single news outlet had their own take on it to either sensationalize it or, or to probe perhaps where they should not. And, and believe me, I'm a strong believer in, in, in the freedom of the press. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I believe we need a, a strong, vibrant, free press. Yes. But there certainly has to be some internal constraints of, shall we say, common sense that says, I really, really, really don't need to step across this line. One, one headline on one of these major news Outlets on it was on MSNBC. It actually said plane would have difficulty staying in the air with empty fuel tanks. <laughs> and I'm going, <laughs> really? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> uh, let me see here. What are the physics behind that? Uh-huh. <laughs> but this was great, big, bold headlines. You know, oh. it's, it's it's just that CNN has uh, Martin Savage in a in a simulator up here in Mississauga, Ontario. It's not a professional air flight simulator. It's a simulator for, and this is according to the the the, the instructor pilot for entertainment purposes only. Oh. Now, I would give it a lot more credibility if they were at Boeing inside a Boeing seven seven seven. 